Windows containers. Yeah, two words you don't hear a lot together. So I think I wanna need some more coffee for that one. The Windows Server 2022 containers uh, actually provide quite a few new capabilities and features, including a much reduced Windows Server container image. So we're going to take a look at how you can get containers running in Windows Server 2022 using Docker. And the process is fairly straightforward, but a bit quirky. And there are a few steps that we need to follow. What about Linux containers? Is that something that you can do? Well, stick around. Let's take a look at Windows Server 2022 Docker containers and see what that process looks like. First thing that we need to do to start playing around with Docker on Windows Server 2022 is actually get our Windows Server 2022 installation with the components that we need to use with Docker containers. We want to install the Hyper-V role as well as the containers feature. So I have Server Manager pulled up and we're going to just next through the wizard choosing uh, our options as we go. Uh, and we're going to select our local server. We're going to select Hyper-V. We're going to add the required Hyper-V roles and features that are needed. So we're going to click Add Features and we're going to click next, select the containers feature. This begins the Hyper-V configuration wizard portion of this add roles and features wizard. So we're going to next through the wizard, we're going to select our ethernet zero network adapter, which in my case in the lab environment is the only network adapter that I have attached to this virtual machine that is acting as my Hyper-V server running Windows Server 2022. I'm going to select next. I'm going to just simply select next on the live migration screen on the default storage location for virtual machines. I'm also going to select next and we get to the install portion. So we're just going to allow the role and features needed to install and then we're going to reboot our server. Now that we have those underlying prerequisites met by installing the role and features needed on our Windows Server 2022 servers, we can now go and install the module needed as well as the package to get Docker installed in Windows Server 2022. First off, we need to install the Docker module. To do that, let's paste in the command install module Docker Microsoft provider. And the repository is the PS Gallery repository. Next, we install the Docker package. We're going to trust the repository. Now we have successfully installed Docker. We are at the point where we can actually pull a Docker image. Now that we have Docker installed, it's a good idea to reboot your Windows Server 2022 host as this helps to restart all the services and make sure that Docker and the underlying components are instantiated correctly. From a PowerShell prompt, you can easily do that with a restart computer PowerShell commandlet. Now that we have Docker installed and we have rebooted our Windows Server 2022 host, we can now actually pull down the Docker image that we would like to use. To do that, I'm going to paste in the command docker pull and then the server image we want to use, which is the server core image with the tag of LTSC 2022. As you can see, the image begins pulling down as it recognizes the image does not exist locally. So we're going to give this a few minutes and let it pull down and run our container. Now that we have finished pulling down the LTSC 2022 image, we can verify that that image exists locally in our image repository. To do that, we can issue the command docker image ls. And as we see, we see the server core image with the tag LTSC2022, verifying that we have indeed pulled down that image to our local repository. Now what we have left to do is actually running a Docker container using our LTSC2022 image. We can use the command docker run. I'm going to use a dash IT, which allows it to be an interactive session where we can actually play around inside the running Windows Server LTSC 2022 Docker container image. Let's see what that looks like. Now we have a different looking prompt. 
As you can see, the running the IT interactive session has now spawned a new command prompt that we are now inside this Docker container. So if we issue a command such as hostname, we see the Docker container hostname as it's running inside of the Docker engine. Very cool. Okay, now let's talk about a real world use case for Windows containers. If you're like me in production environments or maybe even in your home lab environment, you might have seen a dedicated Windows server. Yes, a fat Windows server installation as a virtual machine to run a tiny IIS website. How many times have you seen that? And I have been in environments where there are literally dozens of Windows servers dedicated to run specific IIS websites that may be forward facing or serving out internal resources. Windows Server containers provide a really great way to get away from loading full versions of Windows servers just to simply host websites using IIS. Let's see how we can easily run an IIS website within a Docker container. Let's take a look at how we can develop and create this Docker-based IIS website. To do that, I have copied over a few files into a folder called test IIS. And notably, there is a file called a Docker file. A Docker file is a special file with directives that allow you to build your own custom Docker images using base images that you specify in the Docker file. Let's take a look at the Docker file that I have copied over. I'm just going to look at this in Notepad. In this Docker file, we tell Docker what the base image is that we want to use for this particular IIS website. We then have a PowerShell commandlet that instantiates the IIS directory. We set the working directory, and then we can also copy files into this Docker container that we want to utilize. And I am simply telling it to copy all of the files in the root directory where this Docker file exists. And then we give it the run directive. If you look at the files that I have included in this test IS folder, I have the default IS start page. And the reason I have included this is it gives us a test file to make sure that the IS website is working after we create the Docker image and spin up the Docker image-based IS site. Now that we have the files in place, let's actually build our custom IS Docker container. And that is straightforward. All we need to do is change into the directory that we have our custom files, including the Docker file, as well as the files that we want to be included in this IS website. The command to do that is straightforward. Let's use the command docker build-t we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it IS test, and we're going to tell it where the Docker file is. Since we're inside the directory that we need to be, we can just simply use a period. So Docker build dash T IS test. And the server core image is now pulling down that will be used as the base for our custom IS website based on the Docker image. After just a few moments, the custom IIS Docker container has finished building. And as you can see, we get the successfully built and the IIS test with the latest tag. So if we want to, we can look at our local Docker images. As you can see, we've got an IIS test that is tagged as the latest. So this is going to be our test, which we can use to spin up a new IIS container. Since we have our new IS Docker container image built, we can now use that container image to spin up an actual IS container containing the customizations that we have introduced using the Docker file, as well as the files that we want to include. And I've pasted in the command that we want to use to do that. And it's simply docker run dash D dash P. And we're going to tell it which external port that we want to forward to the internal IIS port 80. We're giving the uh, running container a name called my test site. Then we tell it which custom container image to use, which is the IIS test image. 
Now, as you can see, after we entered the Docker run command with all of the appropriate parameters, we have a running container and we can verify that with a simple Docker PS. As we can see, the image that it lists that we're running from is the IS test image, which we created. Uh, the container is up. It is forwarding from port 8000 to the internal port 80 port. Now let's see if we can actually browse out there. And there you have it. We have a IS website running inside of our Docker container, and we can actually hit it using the external port 8000 forwarding to the internal port 80. Really cool. So what about the elephant in the room? Can you run Linux containers on a Windows server container host? Well, I can just tell you that my results in testing have been very mixed and I'm not too happy with the results that I have received in my home lab uh, working with Linux containers inside a Windows environment. It just still feels like that side of the solution has just not matured to the place where you could really see that adopted. Uh, across the board as a viable use case. Now, there are many ways to run Linux containers inside of Windows. Uh, you can actually use Docker Desktop on a Windows server. Uh, I've also experimented around with WSL, which seems to be the means that Microsoft envisions moving forward to have any interoperability with Linux. That is definitely going to be their preferred method to do that. However, in Windows Server 2022, while you can install WSL2 now, it is supported. I have had mixed results and various weirdness with running uh, Linux containers inside a WSL2 environment. So take that for what it's worth. Let me know what you guys think about that. Have you experimented with a solution to run Linux containers inside of a Docker environment or using another container runtime that you would recommend? Well, hopefully you found this video tutorial about how to install Docker inside of Windows Server 2022, the ins and outs of doing so, the commands that you use, as well as the real world use case that we went through taking an IS website and running that inside a custom built Docker container. It's really cool to be able to do that. Linux containers, in my opinion, are still a mixed bag on Windows Server container hosts. But again, let me know what you guys think. You may have a slick, awesome solution that you would like to recommend in the comments and let the community know about. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.